Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Today in day 6, part 1, we will talk about the functions, how we define it, how we call it, multiple parameter, uh, multiple return, and some more. Okay, we can start our uh, playground. I already did that, so file new playground and then we choose blank, name it, and then we will have it. So I put function here to uh, when you go to the source code uh, from the link, you have all of this. Uh, now we use it. Okay, so let's go to our source. So I use a uh, doc, docs.swift.org, which is the best source, actually the most complete source for function for uh, you know Swift, uh, uh, you know language. Okay, so let's start about the brief that uh, in any section we will uh, get uh, for any that, that subject. So for function, we have this. This is the brief, and then in below we will go details of this. Okay, so functions. Functions are self-contained chunk of code that perform a, a specific task. You give a function a name that identify what it does. So name will gonna say us that what is uh, this function gonna do. So be careful uh, actually uh, think about that you know which uh, name you put on your function and this name is used to call the function to perform its tags and task when needed. Swift Unified function syntax is flexible enough to express anything from a simple CSI function with no parameter name names to a complete objective C styles method with names and argument labels for each parameter. Parameter can provide default value to simplify function call and can be passed as in and out parameter so some of these may be for you pretty new uh, uh, even because we didn't we don't have it in other languages so you just need to be patient to for these uh, four parts that we will go over function and then we will talk about all of them which modify a pass variable once the function has complete is execution every function in Swift has a type consisting of the function parameter type and return type. You can use this type like any other type in Swift. This is very important and very awesome. You can use this type, your function type, as uh, like any other type of uh, type in Swift, which make it easy to pass function as a parameter to other functions. In functional programming, we know that we need to be able to pass function as a parameter that we do in uh, object in, uh, for example, in uh, JavaScript and return function from or uh, yeah, and return functions from functions. Functions can also be written within other function to encapsulate useful functionality with a nested function scope. So this could be uh, used for the encapsulation. As you know, it's uh, one of the fundamental of object-oriented program. Okay, so that's it for about the function. Pretty brief. We will go over through all detail now. Okay, so in part one, defining uh, and calling functions. When you define a function, you can optionally define one or more named typed value that the function takes as input, noun as parameter. So for any function, we can have how many parameter you like and uh, as an input. You can also optionally define a type of value, a type of value that the function will pass back out, uh, as output when it's done. So noun as return type. So 
something that function return is going to be one and it's going to re return time. Every function has a function name, of course, which describe the task that the function perform. Okay, to use the function, you can call the, that function with its name and pass it input value. Okay, because we call it with the name and pass input values known as argument. Okay, so when we call, we said when we de define v name uh, name input as a parameter, and when we uh, call, we name it as an argument. Okay, so just uh, try to get it. Later we will talk about it also, but uh, you need to know that. Same, but uh, one part is uh, parameter and other part is argument. And the beautiful part in Swift is you can, have, you know, in definition, you can use bold and uh, then when you call, you use argument names. That match the type of the function parameters. A function's argument must always be provided in the same order as function parameter list. The function in the example below is called great person because that's what it does it take a person actually greet not great greet person so take person name and inputs and return greeting for that person to accomplish this you define one input parameter a string value called person and a return type string which will contain a greeting for the person. Here we go. So we use function, which is a keyword for definition of the function. The name, and then here is parameter. And this is type of this parameter, and this is what, you know, return type of the function. And here yeah, we have a, you know, body of uh, there are function that we do that finally return a greeting, which is a string. Uh, the defined description, what the function does, what it expects to receive, what and what it returns when it's done. The definition make it easy for function to be called unambiguously from elsewhere in your code. Okay, so this definition make it easy. So here you go. Uh, we got uh, we call greedy and this return for us a string. You call the greet person functionality passing to it, its uh, string value after the person argument label such as greet person Anna. Okay, so here we have a note. So the print with separator, terminator, and here you'll see underline. Function doesn't have a label for the for its first argument because of this. And its other arguments are optional because they have default value. So this is just a description about the print function that we use it a lot. And uh, here under you know in below we will go over these uh, two features. Okay, to make the body of the of this function shorter, you can combine the message creation and its return statement into one line. So we make it a little bit shorter and we put everything in return. So now you will see we call and do the same. parameter and return value before that uh, let's uh, try these codes uh, about the defining and calling function in our playground here we go uh, so here we create a function and with parameter person and uh, type of a string and return type is a string so here we go we pick up this parameter and put it here and uh, create greeting and return it which is a, a string okay here I'm gonna 
use it out uh, and here you see uh, two times this function called once for Anna and once for brain so here you see hello Anna hello brain and I'm gonna run this hello again Anna but just uh, for this one I make it uh, you know a little bit shorter we instead of making this greeting uh, right away we give output to the return and as you see it's working Okay, so let's go to function parameter and return value. Okay, so function parameter and return value, let's have it here. And okay, so function parameter and return value are extremely flexible in Swift. You can define anything from a simple utility function with a single unnamed parameter to a complex function with expressive parameter name and different parameter options let's do it so function without parameter okay so if you are looking for to create a function without parameter what do you do function are not required to define input parameter here we go we put uh, open and close parentheses without any parameter in there and here's a function with no input parameter let's do it here we go we made it just hello world because there's no parameter the function defined still need param uh, parentheses after the function name even though it does not take a parameter the function name is also followed by an empty pair of parentheses when the function is called so these parentheses are mandatory and you will see later when it, we just put this uh, actually this tells Swift that hey, this is the execute, uh, execution function or whatever yeah, okay so function with multiple parameter okay so uh, no parameter now let's do it with multiple parameter function can have multiple uh, input parameter which are written with the functions parentheses separately and separately by commas here we go the function takes personal uh, person's name and here this is this uh, you know and whether they have already been Created as input. So here we go. This is a function we made with multiple parameter. Here we go. And let's run it. Here we go. Hello again, team. Uh, here we go. So we have a person and how you do it. So if already greeted, so we say return, greeted, uh, you know, return greeting greet again person and here greet person we already has greet here so use this one uh, actually the, you know this is uh, recursive so call itself okay and here you will see that find out that it's called uh, you know again or just once okay uh, so function without return value okay so uh, if you want uh, function that you know actually uh, it's also function are not required to define a return type it's not mandatory could be or not so here is a version of a greet function which prints its own string value rather than returning it so not gonna return it this time so it's do print itself so let's do it here you also here you see so greet person stream print hello person okay so here says uh, something so because it does not need er, er, to return the function definition does not include the arrow hyphen with uh, a right angle 
parentheses okay and uh, here just let's see why we get error here so I think because we defined this before so let me put one here and see if it's fixed or not yes because we already had it and uh, if we want to need to, we need to write override I believe then let's try override override can only be specified on class members okay so it's not class members we cannot override it so I, I use different name okay that's good experience we learned something here you go so you will see uh, how it's worked without return just it printed it printed itself so it's strictly speaking this version of a grid function does still return a value even though not return values defined function without a defining return type return a special value of the type void so it's gonna return void this is simply an empty tuple which is written as this Okay, the return value of a function can be ignored when it is called. So also, we say yes, uh, our function return, but we want to re uh, ignore it. Here you go. So what we do? Print and count. So this is string return an integer. So print a string. And return a string dot count and this guy prints uh, without counting so string so let here you go we ignore print and counts and uh, we doesn't we don't care what is returned so then we do not count it so with underline you will get it Yes, uh, and now uh, no uh, return value can be ignored but a function that says it will return a value must always do so a function with a defined return type cannot allow control to fall out of the bottom of the function without returning a value and attempting to do so will result in a compile timer so yes uh, if if I say okay this guy uh, uh, you know this one supposed to return something if I cut this out then I will get error missing return so we need to have a return when we say it's return oops sorry command Z command Z here we go so this is how it's missed okay function with multiple return value okay so as we learn our function can return one value so what we do easy you can use a tuple type as the return type for a function to return multiple value as part of one compound return value here you go this is an example so min and max so we get an array and we return mean and max as a tuple and here so so current mean this guy and current mag this guy and va for value this guy value so we will find you know update current mean and current max and at the end we will return them as a tuple here we go this is how easy we can do it okay and uh, Note that the tuple members do not need to be named at the point that the tuple is returned. So we don't have to name them for the function because their names are already specified as part of function return type. Okay. Optional tuple return types.
Okay, so uh, we return a tuple. We can make it optional. If the tuple type to be returned from a function has the potential to have no value for the entire tuple, you can use optional tuple return type to reflect the fact that the entire tuple can be nil. You write an optional tuple return type by placing a question mark here you go after the tuple types closing parentheses such as this or this exactly what we do with uh, you know one type we want to make it optional we put a string after so for tuple we put this then the both gonna be tuple an optional tuple uh, type such as this is different from a tuple contain optional types so this is different with this with an optional type tuple the entire tuple is optional not just each individual value within the tuple so when we put then uh, entire uh, tuple gonna be optional and here we go So to handle an empty array safely, write the min max array function with an optional tuple return. So if you handle this uh, return type and return a value of nil when the array is empty. Here you go. So if our array is empty, then we will rent an empty. Uh, so you can use optional binding to check whether this version of min max function return a an actual tuple value or nil. Here we go. So we can use optional binding. As we know, if let's or guard let's. We learned that in basic if you remember. But don't worry even if uh, you didn't get that later we will go for optional. Here we go. Um, uh, because we have min max uh, two different versions so I make it this one here you go so mean is minus six and max is one zero nine you see how easy it handle optional with this if I don't put this if yeah, I get error you know runtime error error here go let me let me let me just try it for you to, to show you let me comment this and say okay late bounce equal this I will get error or offer to fix because this is optional return supposed to be optional No, I didn't. How come? Uh, yeah, we use this as return, so it's optional. You can use, he said you can use binding, uh, optional binding, check where version of min max function return actual type. So, uh, so if it's return null, then it's gonna be. Uh, I'll get error. Okay. Here you go, and yeah, that's it for this part. In next part, we will go over function argument label and parameter names. Yes, uh, that's it uh, for today. I hope you liked the video. If you like it, please uh, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to be subscribed for more videos which are coming every day. If you have any question, please ask in comment below. And I wish the best for you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.